So we just talked about using a plugin that gives us the ability to optimize a page. A regular user won't see that result really on the page, but if they are doing a search, and that's what everyone's doing nowadays, they do a Google search, a Bing search, Yahoo search, whatever, with that plugin, hopefully, then using it throughout your whole site, not just one or two pages, but everywhere, that will help people find your page. It's about the content and many of these tricks. Now, that plugin that added some SEO features to the site is not the only useful plugin because uh, I recommend, and also for SEO, to have a contact page. The search engines will see your site as more legitimate if they are if they have an about page, if they have a contact page, and if they are on social media. Because a website that is just from some scammers is just going to be the website itself and there's no way to get in contact with them, there's no way to ask for a refund, and then they disappear from the internet. But you as a legitimate company to show the search engines you will have an about page, a contact page, and if you have social media, links to social media. So we've, we've talked about previously when we had only the wordpress.com site, uh, we talked about um, creating a contact form there based on their built-in plugin. And it worked okay, it did the job, but it might have been a little limiting. So I'm going to talk about another plugin that adds a more powerful contact form feature. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard here and let's go to plugins, add new. So I'm under add new plugin and on the top right search for a plugin called Contact Form 7. There's so many theme authors and so many plugin authors and so many plugins that it helps to have little guidance for people to give you recommendations. And this is one that I've used for a long time. Contact Form 7 it should be right here. It's got the little picture of Mount Fuji and it's by this author here. Just another contact form plugin, simple but flexible. Updated two weeks ago with over a million installs. So, contact form 7 is a plugin that I recommend, and I'll show you how to use it. So, go ahead and click the install button, and then on the following screen, it's going to tell you it's installed. Remember to click activate. So, let me give you a moment to do that. I already did it on mine, but you want to install it and then activate it. Yes. So the difference between the, um, the Jetpack contact form and the contact form 7? I like this one because it gives the ability to create what is known as a CAPTCHA, which uh, I'm sure you've seen on different websites, which is this. It's going to ask people to fill in a code before they can send the email. That will protect you from some spam. Jetpack doesn't have that? No. And also, we can set this up. We can, we can create multiple contact forms. So we can have a contact form on one page that goes to a certain person and another contact form on another page that goes to someone else. You or, can also have the, um, the map where you can put a map on it and the contact form or your location in that? Not on this contact form plugin, but we can get we can get that from another plugin or from the Google code. So if you remind me during the during the lab time, I can show you that, so you can have a location in your contact form. But you want to activate that plugin and another plugin because this works together. Two things. I'll show you how to use the plugin in a moment. But to add the captcha feature requires another plugin, another free plugin. So if you've activated it and it takes you back to the plugins screen, we're going to add another plugin. We're going to add another plugin, and this one is called Really Simple Captcha. It's from the same author. 
and uh, he created these to work together. They're two separate little pieces of software, two little separate plugins. So search for a really simple captcha, and this one's got uh, some guy building something, and it's from the same author, Takayuki Miyoshi. And so um, you want to click on that one as well. Install it, and don't forget to activate it. Once you activate it, uh, it should take you back to your plugins. And I see that my contact form 7 is active because it's blue. And my really simple CAPTCHA is also active. And now, uh, I think on yours, do you see two different contact links or just one? Just one. Just one. Okay. The, okay, the, the Jetpack contact is on its, on its Jetpack screen. Okay, never mind. So here we have a contact, a brand new contact screen. So if you click on that, it'll show you all your current contact forms. I've already done this once, but uh, I believe yours says contact form one. And I named mine into contact one. But um, what does yours say there? Contact form one. OK. So this, this is the screen where you can create multiple contact forms, because you know you've got right at the top here, add a new. So you might already have one. We're going to ignore it. Uh, and instead, at the top, we'll select add new. So I'm under the contact form uh, section, and at the top, add new contact form. So it's slightly confusing, perhaps, but that's why I'm here to help you. So I clicked on it, and it asks right away what language to use. By me, For me, the default is English, because I set up my WordPress site as English. So I'll say, OK, yeah, add a new contact form in English. So click Add New. At the top, it says untitled. So I can have a contact form in the About page. I can have a contact form in the Contact page. I can have a contact form in the Blog. And all of those could be different contact forms, or the same one. Um, so here, it's asking for a name. So click under Untitled, and I'll change that to, say, Main Contact Form. And I'll click Save. If you want to edit it, you can click there and edit it again. And what's cool about the plugin is on the right side, we've got Duplicate or Delete. So if we want to make another plugin, but make it another contact form, but make it a little different, I can duplicate. Now, here under the mon that's the name of this one, and then it says here, Copy this code and paste it into your post, page, or text widget content. We'll get to that in a moment. But to actually use it, all we need to do is copy that code and paste it anywhere that we want it in our site. So we'll get to that. How does it actually work, or how does it look like? Um, on the left side here, There is a paragraph, there's a P tag, closing P tag. There's a paragraph that says, your name required, BR, which is break, which is like pressing enter. And right below it, it's got a box for the person to type their name. And that box is represented with that little code. It's a text box, and the box is called your name. There's another paragraph, like pressing enter, and then it says, your email. That's also required. And it's another input box that says email, and it's got that that name, and so forth. The person can type a subject. This one doesn't say required. And notice, the ones that are required need to have this little asterisk. It's not just putting the word required. It has to have the asterisk. And then after that comes your message, 
text area. Now, if you know any HTML, you can write whatever HTML you, you want here. You can create a div and make it into columns. You can write some CSS and put a background color. Right here is just a very basic HTML file that um, will display something like this when it's actually put into a page. Right? There's the your name required and then the box. Your name, your email, your subject, and your message. So whatever you write here, so if, I, if I type something, your subject, that's what's going to appear on the screen. And if you want that to be required, if you, if you do want a subject there, you put an asterisk. So now that subject will be required. Even though I don't have the word required, it will be required. So it's it's not as as like user friendly. It doesn't hold your hand like the Jetpack contact form, but it could be very powerful. Uh, I'll explain more in a moment. And what it does is when someone fills it in, it's going to send an email. Right here, you can mark who to send it to. So here, it's going to go to one of my email addresses. Who is it coming from? It's going to take whatever the person typed in the box up here called your name. This is going to come from whatever person that whatever they typed in the box your name. And their email address is going to be WordPress at victorsart.info, which I don't want that. I want the person's email that they typed. So I'm going to change that. We're going to change that actually. So delete the, delete the email that's inside of those angle brackets, like that. Delete it so that it's got the angle brackets like that. And instead, we'll make it say, in square brackets, your email. That's coming from the little box above there where the person types their email. So the box up here, it's, it asks the person, type in your email, and the box is an email box, and the name of the box is your email. So whatever someone types in there will show up here, and it gives you a preview of that there. When, when this gets sent to your email address, it's going to say, this came from the person's name and their email and the subject they wrote and the message body. Uh, don't worry about additional headers or file attachments, but that's what's going to be sent out to you. And it's going to have a little thing at the bottom that says, this email was sent from a contact form on your site. Actually, I have to fix this right here on mine. There, Victor's art and the address. So I'm going to get an email that looks like that, and it's going to have the stuff that the person filled in. This has a, another, you can send this to another person if you want. Who else is this going to get sent over to? If you turn that on, use email number two, it's going to send it to two, two people at once, for example. That might be useful. I'm not going to, I don't need it, so I won't turn it on. I'm going to scroll down. And then there's a whole section here about possible error messages. All the defaults are fine, but for example, sender's message was sent successfully. It'll pop up to tell the person, your message was sent successfully. Thanks. Or you can change it to say anything you want, like success. That's it. Sender's message was has failed. You can change that. Fail to send your message. Please try it later or contact the administrator by another method. I can just make that say, sorry, error. If there's validation errors, that's the text will appear. If this realizes it's spam, it's going to make that text and so forth. So right now this contact form is kind of basic. It's asking for those items right there. We can add more. So let's say 
we'll go back to the top where it says form and we will press enter right there uh, give yourself some space where it says under your message and before submit send click right there and then on the right side it says generate tag these are the extra things we can add to the contact form that are not available for example in the jetpack one so if we want people to add a phone number so if I if I click there and generate tag phone number notice um, it says here various options and then copy this code and paste it into the form at left so if I copy that and paste it here now there will be a box to accept the telephone number I would write something there like the example that's already there I would write the p tag slash p and I would write your phone just like the example so now the text is going to appear your phone break or a new line and then a box for pe people's type of telephone number this telephone number will not appear in the email because notice it also says copy this code and paste it into the form and put this code into the mail field below I haven't said anywhere um, I haven't said anywhere in my message to actually show that email, uh, that that phone. So if I further change the message body to say uh, phone number and put in that little short code, now when it sends me the email in the body, it'll say who's it from, what's the subject, what's the message, and the phone number they wrote. I didn't make it required, but if I activate on top here, required, notice how it just changed it here to add the asterisk, which I would add over here. But I'll say it's not required. And after all of these changes, I want to save it. So again, it's more steps than the, than the Jetpack one, but it could be more powerful. It could let you collect more data than just what the Jetpack one was saying. And it'll give you this protection about anti-spam. Let's add that, and then we'll actually add it to our page. It's not quite complete yet. I'm going to set it up down here after the phone number that I want someone to type... Um, the the captcha so I know I'm gonna write something like that so I'll, I'll start off actually with this with that p tag like that and I'll write uh, enter the code and in that spot there it'll show that random code then the person has to write the code before they can click send that'll work by again clicking that generate button let's see here generate tag and we've got here captcha at the bottom so I don't really need to change anything here I can make it smaller add some class and color and so forth but it just says copy this code and paste it from the left for the image to appear is that one and for the input field is that one so I copy that paste it right here and actually I'll add another break at the end because I want the I want the picture to appear and then on the next line I want the box for the person to write the code which is the second one here for the input field so I'm just copying and pasting the code that it's giving me on the right side into the left side Unfortunately, we don't see how it looks like until we save it and put it on a page.
So make sure you, you pay attention to the numbers that it's giving you. On mine, it's giving me CAPTCHA 609. On yours, it might be another number. So don't use my number. Use whatever number it's telling you on your, on your plugin. If they use it, you put it twice there? Well, notice it's different. This is CAPTCHA C and CAPTCHA R. Looks almost exactly the same, but yeah, number one is the box of the actual code, and number two is the box of the, uh, of the, of the input box where they write the code. So if you made this change, remember to save it. <coughs> and then to use it, now it says back at the top, copy this code and paste it into your post, your page, your, or your widget. So I'm going to copy that whole code, and I'm going to go to example over to a contact page. You might not have a contact page. Just put it anywhere for the moment, maybe just on the home page. It, doesn't really belong there, but I just need a place to put it. So I'm going to copy the code that it tells me up there, and I'll go to a page. I'll go to my home page. I'll paste it at the very end. I'm going to preview it without publishing yet. I just want to preview it. Preview changes. And there we go. We've got your name, your email, subject, your telephone, enter the code. If I click send right now, you entered the code incorrect, and I get that pop up right there. Validation errors occurred. Please confirm the fields and submit again. If I don't want it to sound like a robot, I can go back to that form and change the error message. Let's say here, it's telling me fill in that field, fill in that field. This is not required, that's not required. So I'm going to put in an email here. So let's say I fill in some of that. Then there's the phone number. It's not required, but I'll put in a phone. And let's say I'm writing the code, but I wrote it wrong. A D D P. Send. You entered incorrect code here, so that's going to prevent those spammers. Let me try again. Twenty-four P E. Send. And so it let me send it. There's the successful message. got the email and um, and here it is right here it says yep what I wrote there it took it took uh, who it came from their email the subject what they wrote the telephone number and then at the end it says this email was sent from a contact form on Victor's art so maybe just to really show it off right there see that it did it did send it to me so it's a few more steps this is why I did a little video on it but you, you're seeing that it could be pretty powerful. If you go back to edit that that um, contact form, you can have it collect other things, like um, what else was in there, like a little quiz. You could put in a quiz there with like true or false or whatever. You can put bullet points or radio buttons so that it, it can fill in like, where did you hear about us? Uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, whatever, and have that people fill that in. So that's something you can explore on your own. But uh, this is a plugin. Uh, n it's not officially from from WordPress. It's not a jet. It's not from Jetpack. It's from an independent developer, and it's very powerful. I've used it myself for a long time, 
it does need a little bit of getting used to and a little bit of setup, but once you get used to it, you're going to see this is better than the Jetpack one. You can create multiple ones because then you could have different contact forms with different information on different pages. And when you go back to the contact forms screen, they'll all be listed here. There's my contact one, there's my main contact, and I just need to add that short code wherever I need it in my site, and I have a new contact form. So any questions on that plugin? Could I see where, where did you insert it? Or did you copy? Oh, the, the break. Okay, let me show you right here. You want the break wherever you want a new, like when you a person presses enter. So I put a break after CAPTCHA C, the one where the little code appears. And then what that does is like pressing enter, and then on the next line you're going to see the CAPTCHA R, which is the box where the person writes the code themselves. Right, any other questions on this plugin? In box. your site, yeah. So you copy that code and you paste it in any page or post, and that's where the contact form will show up. Now one trick that I don't see listed, let me check again, yeah, I don't see this, but notice on my example, I've got a contact form and then I, people can write whatever and they're like, ah, never mind, clear. I want to I want people to cancel that with a clear button. There's no generate text for that. So I'll show you how to add that. This is a little bit of plain old HTML. Right now there's a button. There's a there's a submit button and the text that appears on the button is send. So if I wanted to for the button to say send it. I could write send it, no problem. And what I want is a button to clear in addition to a button to send because maybe someone wants to start over. So inside of that paragraph, inside of those two p tags, I'm going to add a space right here and then back up. I just want a space between the code I'm about to write and the code that's already there. So I just added a space and I'm going to write this uh, angle brackets. Notice that's different. It's not square brackets, it's angle brackets, which is shift comma and shift period on your keyboard. Angle brackets, the less than, the greater than. And I'll write input space. I'm still inside the angle brackets. Type equals and then an opening quote, and then an ending quote, and inside the quote I'll write reset. This is creating a button that will reset your form. Right now that button doesn't have any text on it though. So after the quote but still in the angle bracket, then we'll type value equals quotes, and whatever I write in those quotes is what will appear on the button such as clear. So this is some HTML to make a simple button that clears your form fields. You can write whatever you want inside the button in the value property. And it has to have the type of reset so that the button behaves like a reset button. And it's an input field technically, but it behaves like a button. So all you have to do here is now save this, don't forget to save this, and it should then automatically update wherever you pasted that code. I see the code here. Yes, right here. Oops. 
zoom in right here. But don't forget there's a space right after the input. So now try that. Save it. You don't have to copy and paste that again. It's already on your page. Go to your page, view your page, and you should see there's a brand new clear button. Just to show you, here I put it temporarily in my home page, there's everything that I had before, and now I've got a brand new button, clear. So as I start to write something there and I click clear, it clears the whole form. You've probably used forms and you've probably wanted to clear a form to start over if it's, if it's got problems. So that trick with that code, with that HTML code, will clear all of the fields of your form to start over. And this is a, a f hmm. it might be your theme, so we'll look at it in a little bit to see to make it look the same. Um, on my theme, it looked like it, it obeyed it, but perhaps on some of you it, it won't, so we'll, we'll, we can look at it. Um, so having a contact form is part of legitimizing your website you want people to be able to contact you for legitimate reasons and so we have the CAPTCHA to prevent the spammers and the search engines uh, are going to be looking at your site and seeing okay they've got a contact form they're legitimate will rank them better than this other website that is very similar but doesn't have contact info because they're probably fake so having a contact form, having an about page, those are good for SEO. And then we use that we use that Yoast plugin. The concept of it is very easy. Use the plugin. But you have to do that for all of your pages. I've only got I've got an about page, a contact page, a home page, a blog page. And I've got three blog posts in there. So I've got um, I've got like eight pages that I need to optimize. If I had 40 pages to optimize, then that's a, long, a lot of effort, but it's going to work out for you in the end because you want your pages to be in the OK or better category of SEO. Notice if you've got that plugin installed, you're going to see at a glance uh, your value up there and even some drop downs so that you can start to search. Analyze this page for various things like Facebook and HTML validator, all that cool stuff. Analyze this page on HTML. Uh, for some reason it can't be checked, but you've got these different things. Research via Google. <coughs> it's showing that the term original artwork is getting popular little by little. So that's what that plugin does. I wanted to introduce introduce those two plugins because I think they're very useful and I use them for clients. Uh, so any uh, general questions on this contact plugin or the previous one? Okay, so we'll do some lab time. There's no assignment for this lesson, but we're building toward having a final project, so stay tuned for that. So we'll wrap up at this point. I'll upload the videos, and you can review them. And uh, if, again, if, you, if you've got any assignments you haven't turned in, send them to me, and, and you'll get graded on them. So we'll do some lab time until about 7.30 if you need it, and uh, see you next time.